So um, hi, everyone. And I'm here with Justin. Oh, I, I forgot your last name. Merler, Marler. Um, Marler. <laughs> Marler. OK, I'm um, um, sorry. Um, so so I'm here with um, Justin Marler, and he's um, pretty famous. Um, what would we say, like moderately famous? Because because um, you have a YouTube channel with um, 60,000 60, subscribers. Well, you know, they, they, they do like A tier, B tier, C tier actors. I'm probably like a, a Z list personality somewhere around there. <laughs> Mildly. And, um, I actually, um, I, I, I met a couple um, Z list um, movie star or, or like, like B list movie stars, or, or I think they were like extras in, uh -huh. um, in Bangkok. Um, I don't know if I told you, but, um, but we were, um, we, uh, uh, we were all uh, we were all talking. They were um, they uh, they they had a vacation in Bangkok for like a, a, a week, and they were all planning on um, starting up a, um, a restaurant in Bangkok. Like only one could cook, but like there were three part there were three potential partners. So um, so, so basically, this one guy was going to start a restaurant, and then these other two um, two guys, and and the restaurant sounded sounded really cool. Um, I thought it would be a really, really bad investment, but I really want another like cool restaurant in Bangkok, so I kind uh -huh. of encouraged them, um, to do that. But uh, uh, but 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 anyway, um, um, they were all like extra um, extras, and one guy had like sixty movies on IMDb. Wow. Um, um, but um, but but like none of no movies I'd ever heard of before, just like um, <laughs> like like, like Sunday um, Sunday home specials or whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you're you're kind of in that category, or or maybe a little more uh, more famous. Yeah, probably. There's probably only a uh, one place where I'd probably get recognized if it was like a when there's an event. There's probably only one place I'd ever get recognized, and that's happened before. So that's that's cool, I guess. So um, what um, so so can you tell me about your um, fan story? Fan story? Oh, not so. What, uh, what, um, when are you recognized? I mean, so the YouTube channel you're talking about, um, since it's a Lego YouTube channel, we, my friends and I usually go to a Lego convention in Virginia each year. And that's where, that's where people recognize me. And I think the first time I went was uh, 2017. And it felt weird that my videos were actually like being recognized by people. It was like, hey, it's that guy who's made this like dumb comedy video from who knows when, like 2013. Like, whoa, you actually know who I am. That's strange. <laughs> people actually watch my videos and they only have like thousands of views, 12, maybe 10,000 wow. plus at best. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. So, so most, of your, um, most of your videos are more like, like voiceovers, right? Uh, like you uh, only have videos where, uh, where, where where you're like a actor yeah uh, that's because I don't like talking to the camera very much if I uh, talk to the camera like I am now I usually lose my train of thought and I probably will in a bit I, d I don't feel like I'm very uh, good at communicating when I'm looking straight at the camera and I'm very good at uh, losing my words so when when I'm doing voiceovers I can just read the script and I already have it planned out what I'm going to say I can just keep repeating what I do like maybe I screw up a line I could just like cut the cut the audio and redo it again so I feel like it's a lot easier to do voiceovers than it is to uh talk into a camera or talk on the spot so so um, how did they recognize you did you did you have a like TTV t-shirt or uh, uh no because I mean I have enough of a social media presence I have enough of a social media presence where I've posted pictures or I have shown myself in some videos so I'm not a complete stranger um but no at the, the uh at the Lego conventions they have like brick badges and mine's upstairs but they have brick badges where you can put like your name and your username and all that. And that's what I did. And I did have a thing that said the TTV channel, like under my name. So it is a bit easier to spot out. Oh, oh hey, it's that, it's that guy. Uh, uh, cool. Oh, and, and um, um, could you, um, could you talk about your username on TTV? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh boy. So the username I go by is a uh, Tenebrae Invictus. It's a, uh, long buildup of uh, history there when it comes to how I, I came up with that. Mostly mostly came from World of Warcraft where 
I saw this this guild, this clan of people, and their name was Invictus. So I was like, wow, that sounds really cool. And I looked it up, and it was like, like a Latin word for invincible. I'm like, ooh, I like that. And then later on, I was playing World of Warcraft again, and there was this dragon boss that I was in a team to kill the dragon, and his name was Tenebron. I'm like, ooh, where's that from? And I looked it up, and it's like, oh, it's from the, the Latin word tenebrae for shadow. I'm like, ooh, cool. Invincible shadow, tenebrae Invictus. And it, it, I've been very detached from what it actually means. Like, I don't think, oh, my name's Invincible Shadow and that's awesome. I just think Tenebrae Invictus, <laughs> it sounds cool and it's foreign and nobody knows what the heck that means. And, you know, there, it, it has a has a good ring to it. It's like, it's technically wrong. Like it's a misgendered name. Like one's a feminine word and one's a masculine word and they're supposed to like both be one or the other. But, you know, not enough people know Latin for me to care to fix that. And it's already been uh, 10 plus years since I made that name and, you know, I, I, I like that it's unique. You can Google it. You can Google Tenebrae Invictus and 90% of the results are me in some form. So I'm pretty happy with it. Well, that's, uh, that, uh, that's pretty cool. And and I know how to spell Invictus, but I don't know how to spell ten Tenebrae. Um, uh, <laughs> T-E-N-E-B-R-A-E. Okay, ten, um, Tenebrae. And so so that, that was a dragon on World of Warcraft? Yeah, it was a dragon named Tenebron, yeah. Okay. Oh, so oh, oh, slightly then, different. Then you, then you looked at the Latin and you got the Latin yeah. word for it. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, and uh, it always, um, Invictus always confused me because you're like a nice, like easygoing, <laughs> not, not, not like this in your face, invincible um, uh -huh. guy. Um, it, is, um, it is really, really cool, but, um, um, but, um, but you're you, you just seem a lot less pushy than like a um, than a um, <laughs> will be in my head of like um, somebody called Invictus. Yeah, no, I, I I totally get that. When I first started using that username, most people associated me with the uh, the soccer, the football movie that came out around the same time with I think with uh, Matt Damon. I don't exactly remember, but it's just called Invictus and. I, I don't remember who else was in it, but I won't I won't look it up right now. It, um, did you watch it? No, I haven't. I haven't watched it. But people like would take the poster and they they take a they like post my face or whatever, like my Bionicle character's face on it and stuff like that. And they're like Invictus, oh look, it's a movie about you. And yeah, you know, that's about it. I've never like tried to check out the movie because of that, but that was the case. <laughs> Cool and um, so so TTV is uh, TTV is a YouTube channel about Legos, and um, it's it's pretty much like anything anything Lego related, right? Yeah, it's pretty broad. Um, like uh, like I, except for um, except for Duplo and but like I don't think I don't think you guys have any Duplo posts. Um, well, we don't really have any incentive to review Duplo. I mean, we're not. We're we're trying to. Our audience tends to be like older teens to adults, or you know, anywhere in between. Usually not kids. Um, so there's no reason for us to review Duplo because we don't exactly want our kid videos to be watched by uh, two to four year olds. <laughs> um, but um, but but pretty much every uh, pretty much every other Lego topic, right? Yeah, I mean, we do like podcasts, we do set reviews, we do comedy videos. Um, sometimes I do analytical videos when I feel like it, but that hasn't been too many. Um, I know you watched the like the pretty much the one video I did that was analytical, and I liked I liked that direction, but I just don't have anything that I want to research at the moment to to try and continue that kind of trend of video. So. Yeah, it's been mostly like podcasting or reactions or set reviews pretty much. Or vlogs. I forgot I, I forgot I do do vlogs every every so often when I'm when I have my mojo of you know making a mockumentary sort of video. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I um so so for, um, for me I I had a couple of videos where I just um did like a whole bunch of uh, research um, mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for them, but the, uh, those are just super, super exhausting. And it, like, like one of my um, one of my goals on YouTube is to get 
famous enough to be able to justify um, hiring somebody to do my research for me. Um, <laughs> Cause, uh, um, cause then, um, cause then I can like do well research videos and, um, without like spending like three months per video. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't blame you. <laughs> so, uh, so how did, how did you get involved in T with TTV? So that goes back to where the same place I got my, uh, username from. I, uh, as a kid, I really liked Bionicle, the, the Lego theme that was all about building action figures. Here, I'll grab one of them. So I was really into Bionicle as a kid and that involved like buying the books, buying the sets obviously. And then I wanted to go online and, and talk to people about Bionicle um, since I didn't, it was kind of popular as a kid, like, but they only, my friends only really cared about the toys. They didn't care about the story as much. So I wanted to go online to talk about the story. I found, um, different message boards to talk about that. I was like nine years old at the time. And eventually down the road, I probably about five years later, I finally uh, came across a. I got invited to a chat room for people on, on this specific message board I had already grown up using. And from there, the people that I started befriending there, they wanted to start a podcast and I didn't join right away, but eventually I did. I did join the podcast. And we got a reason to start up a YouTube channel from that podcast to host all our videos, um, our recordings of the podcast. And from there, like, hey, okay, let's try out, you know, making other videos besides just podcasts. And so one of my friends started set reviews. One of them started like, um, he called it an autopsy. Like he analyzed the community as a whole to talk about different subjects. Um, I had another friend who made videos about going onto eBay and looking up goofy listings where people write like weird names for the Bionicle and Lego sets that they're selling. And for me, there was this uh, satire channel that I really liked where this guy would jokingly review video games. And so I did the same where I looked at the uh, old Bionicle games that were on Lego's website and I would pretend that I was giving a very serious review of uh, of the game as if it was like a triple A title that you're spending lots of money to play on like a computer or PlayStation or Xbox, you know, I treat these little tiny games that were on the websites as if they're serious. And so we kind of just branched from there. And on top of just making our podcast, we uh, made a whole bunch more from that. And so that that's how I got started with it. Yeah, your, um, your Lego game reviews were um, awesome. Because <laughs> they're um... <laughs> Uh, uh, be, uh, because I'm pretty sure that nobody reviewed those in as in depth as as you did. No, that's the that that's for sure. There's videos of people playing them, but there's nobody that's ever like decided to review them except me. So it's got a nice little niche. I'm I'm surprised you watched them though because the humor is um I would call that call those airplane jokes where they would go over anybody's head unless you're already a Bionicle fan and you know what exactly I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I like, like a whole bunch, a whole bunch went over my head, but, uh, but I could tell it was a, um, uh, like, like, like very sarcastic, um, <laughs> video. So, um, so, so even though, um, even though I didn't like get all the jokes, it was, uh, it, it, it was just really fun to watch. That's good. So um, you made uh, you made kind of a movie um, of like like you and your sister like going in the mountains or something like that. Um, oh, or, that, yeah, a friend of mine, or, yeah, or, or your girlfriend. I um, I don't remember. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a friend and her family. Yeah. So um, so so what uh, what was that about? I can't um, I can't remember. I remember it was good, but I I can't remember. So that one was the first video I had made in a couple of years or maybe a little less than that. So I had started that series you're talking about of like um, sarcastic reviews or joke reviews. And that was like 2013, 2014, and then one in 2016. And then I stopped. That was 2018. So I wanted to make a comeback video. The the footage at the start of that video you're talking about going through the mountains technically wasn't related at all that was just like recording going on a trip but when I came back I was like you know I kind of have an idea for a video now and so I like spliced those together 
and use that as an excuse to make a comeback into actually working on my videos again. So that's that's what you saw is just like a a goofy reintroduction of of me as a person and me starting up my videos again. <laughs> Cool. Um, awesome. Uh, um, so, um, so you're an, you're a great actor, and I um, I hope to, I hope to see more videos like that. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a bit less uh, common now because <laughs> I have much less of a drive to work on that sort of thing. Like uh, over over the last couple of years, our videos have kind of declined in being made because mm -hmm. we all just kind of as we get older. I mean, we started this as teenagers, and now we're adults with jobs or whatever. We're just not feeling it at this point. So we've all kind of gone our separate ways. We're still around, we still hang out, but have a lot less motivation to uh, edit videos. So there's a lot less of those these days. Yeah, yeah. And and um, so um, so far, like all my videos are, are one take videos because um, I, um, I, I started that when I do, was doing Amazon video reviews. And yeah, yeah. Um, I would always, um, uh, um, because like, uh, like, back back then especially with like computer um hardware like even though i had a fast computer it was just just a total pain to um to edit everything and um and and, and i was doing a whole bunch so so i always um i always like um ha had a target of like three minutes for my video review and then uh -huh. if i if, if i messed up at all i would just redo it so i just redo it redo it redo it redo it until i got a good take and then that's what I would post for my video review. Um, so, um, so yeah, any um, anyone that can edit their videos, um, I um, I always have like the utmost respect for them because I <laughs> like I'm, uh, I made um, like one and a half videos that were edited, and, um, and and the one video I made was like two minutes long, and it took me like seventy hours. I um, tracked it. Oh on. wow, um, but, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh, this was back in like like 2000 so like a lot of <laughs> uh, rendering time um but um but but yeah um that's why uh, like eventually um uh, eventually with my youtube channel i want to um i want to do like something but um but but uh but yeah that's um uh, that, uh, that's why i like videos like this are just like one um one take one take videos. I um, I have this uh, I have this idea of what, well um, what uh, what I really want to do is have um, I, I made one video like this where uh, where where I was talking and then at the very end I spliced on this guy that I uh, you know the website Fiverr yeah so um, so so like um, on on Fiverr they have like a whole bunch of people that are like well like hey I'll do um, I'll advertise your product for you I'll I'll make a video for you um, and, and then they say oh um, but but like it has to be true it, uh, like, like I'm I'm not gonna lie and um, so um, so I thought okay I'll, I'll I'll go the other way instead of like them like sponsoring me I'll just have this guy like read um, hi Joseph Dewey told me that he wants you to subscribe to his video <laughs> yeah um, I remember seeing something like that at the end yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, um, but, um, but I don't, um, I don't really know how to like splice the two, the two things together. So, um, so, so I want to learn enough about like video editing to know how to like, um, cause if, if your video is in like exactly the same format, then I think there's this like Linux utility that can like splice videos together really easily, but, mm -hmm. but like if it's a different frame rate or anything like that, then, um, then it's really, really tough. So um, um, my next uh, my next step in in video editing is just to be able to convert like Fiverr thirty second um, um, Joseph promotion videos into like <laughs> my phone takes, um, and then um, so that I can I can splice them together. Yeah, I mean uh, I don't know how much about Linux, but I know I, I tend to use like either websites to do the conversion. Um, or since I use Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro to do my video editing, usually it comes in with a built-in encoder. So it knows how to take in all the different file formats and then like, you know, end up producing the video in the same, you know, like uh, file format. So it's pretty easy that for, for me. 
Cool. Uh, that's uh, that's awesome. Ha uh, have you thought about um, having your hobby be editing my YouTube videos? No, because I've barely <laughs> been editing mine. Like I opened up Premiere Pro now because I need to get around to. There's a video series that I made with my like a couple friends, and we recorded the whole thing in one chunk. But I'm too lazy to go and individually chop it up and like tune the audio levels because it kind of goofed up. I've been like, it's a, it, it's work that takes like an hour to two, like editing them because they're like 30 minute segments, but mm -hmm. I've had zero drive to work on them. Like I just kind of push one out every couple weeks, even though they should have been like back to back to back releases uh, more or less. So it, it's, it's easy work, but I don't know why I'm just not getting around to it. So I would not want to edit your videos when I can't get them out in a timely <laughs> manner. <laughs> Cool. So, uh, so, so, any advice? Um, any advice for me on like going from where I am now to um, like where I am now is just like um, one take videos, and then um, and then like once a year, then doing something fancy like adding something on the end of, of one of my videos. Um, so, any um, any advice for me on like getting up to the next video editing level? um probably having a video editing program it sounds like you you kind of need one yeah yeah and <laughs> that would uh, kind of make a difference <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that's uh that's a good uh that's a good point because um because so far I'm, I'm just using like free stuff on linux and um uh, that's on a pretty slow laptop so that so like one of the next steps i need to do is buy a like decent um computer that can like process that's true that's been like i think that's frustrating for my friends and i over time i mean my friends have upgraded computers i haven't upgraded mine as much but um processing time on making videos is can be very long if you've got like a 10 minute plus high quality video it can take 30 minutes to an hour to to get that rendered and Sometimes even just like dragging your video files across or playing it back, it doesn't play at the speed you want. Sometimes it lags a little bit. There's some issues with video editors if your computer's not up to snuff. Um, so that can be a little frustrating, but so I totally understand waiting till you have something better. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, so um, so so what um, what are you what are you working on now? Uh, video or, yeah, uh, yeah, or, or or like, what's um, what's your next idea? I don't know. That's I, I have a backlog of a lot of stuff I have to work on. So right now I'm I need to finish the one video I'm doing, and then there's like a couple other documentaries I'm working on. They're they're privately for like my friends and I. There was a for my first job before I I, I moved to Thailand and worked at uh, Unicity with you. Um, I was taking care of a special need, a kid with special needs. And um, one year, like, so back in 2017, the parents went out of town and I had to go take the kids with their grandma to go see Santa. Um, it was like a company provided like Santa trip, like taking photos of the family with Santa and all that. And so I needed to take them in their 12 passenger van over to see Santa, like 20 miles away or something like that. And it was a disaster of a day for the kids before I showed up. And so I decided to start filming some of it to see how bad it really went. And then uh -huh. I took them to see Santa and I accidentally like um, got rear-ended by a guy who just happened to be following me while I was doing a weird sort of U-turn. And there were just a lot of problems with that day. It was, it, it ended on a good note, um, but it was a bit of a disaster and I recorded some of it. So I'm finally compiling that they knew I had the footage and I told them I'd make it like three years ago. I never got around to it. So that's my first project is putting together this. I interviewed the kids after it was over and all that stuff, like just some like goofy stuff. So I'm throwing together that footage, probably going to narrate it. Um, just make a quick like 10 minute video for them finally. And then I have another trip that I went on with a friend where I had all these recordings and then I never put it together. So I'm probably doing some of those private stuff first and then I'll see what I feel like working on the on my backlog of videos. <laughs> cool. So, um, so, so those kind of videos don't go to your YouTube channel, right? 
no 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 <laughs> no i tend to i tend to, i do upload them on there but i tend to make it private and then i just like send it to a few friends like oh hey look at this goofy thing i worked on kind of thing because uh -huh. just like the subject matter is uh i don't think the people involved with it necessarily want to be on youtube and i don't blame them so uh so I would just be sending it to them and then maybe some other friends like, okay, look at this. This is like a disaster of a trip. Here you go. Check it out. Yeah, that's, um, um, that's, that's really cool that you make those, um, those videos, not, um, not to be famous, but, uh, but just to have like a cool video. Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a fun hobby. Um, to do it and I just like making it when I when when I feel like it that's always been my main thing is I make videos when I feel like it and recently I haven't been feeling it so um, now with like these kind of ideas coming back up like something kind of pushed me to to work on them again now I am kind of like yeah I want to do this but I don't think um, I don't think I'd ever want to make it into a career at this point um, it's just a fun hobby to like throw together videos and make it for memory's sake and you know comedy and all that cool that's uh, that's that's awesome so um so so with um so so i don't uh, i don't really know much about um legos and i um like like i um and and when i was a kid i don't know if i got like any like real legos i think i i think all my legos were like fake uh, fake legos and then my um my little uh, my little brothers got um, got, got like re, um, real Legos, um, and um, and and I don't know if that like like where Bionicle was, but but like when I was growing up, there weren't any um, Bionicles. Just uh, yeah, like, no, you um, would have you would have been an adult by then, so probably not. <laughs> so um, so 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 could you um, could you tell could you could you give me like history about Bionicle and and like other like big phases in in um lego development well i wouldn't say i'm the most well versed but basically in the late 90s lego started making questionable decisions trying to compete with other brands when it came to action figures or like um different kind of building methods that involved like snapping pieces together kind of like connects they had a bunch of weird ideas that were failing and the company was tanking um so they finally decided, okay, you know, let's try something that's not technically brick based. And they came up with Bionicle, uh, which is like just a fusion of different ideas, kind of like adapting like Polynesian, like Islander culture, along with the fact that action figures were trending. And they had a pretty good fusion of like combining that kind of story idea and the aesthetic. And it was right place, right time. And, it, and so it came out in 2001, technically 2000 if you're in like Europe or something like that. But anyways, it came out at the right place, right time. And it became like a huge craze. Uh, a lot of people got into it without really realizing it was Lego, but uh, the Bionicle sales for the first three years actually like saved the company financially. Um, the, the older executives, the more conservative people who liked the bricks and the standard stuff, like the traditional Lego bricks weren't too happy with Bionicle at, at the company. And mm -hmm. But they, they still dealt with it because they knew that it was like saving them more or less. Um, so that's kind of where like Bionicle was, is like the buildable action figure that like made a huge difference to the company, but then they kind of pretended it wasn't a thing. And eventually after like 10 years of the theme running, it kind of tapered off and they ended the theme before it would... Uh, the sales did get bad enough where it wasn't awful, but they didn't want it to leave a bad taste in like uh, retailers' mouths um where it's like oh you know no one wants to buy bionicle anymore so they stopped it before it got to that point so that if they brought it back at a future point retailers would be like oh yeah i remember that was you know bionicle's awesome we sold a lot of those you know, that kind of that kind of thing but uh, so, so so when did uh when did bionicle stop uh 2010 like uh, okay so um and and so now, now Lego doesn't make any Bionicle, like, like there's no new Bionicles, right? No. So after 2010, they launched a new like action figure line, buildable action figure line that was called Hero Factory. And that was uh, a little more clunky, uh, clunkier than Bionicle build wise. Um, 
it was clunkier than Bionicle build wise. And it lasted for a few years. And after like over the course, it was probably like five, six years. It did get better over time, but they stopped it because they actually did bring Bionicle back in 2015. And they used the same kind of build style as uh, the Hero Factory line. Bionicle came back for a year and a half and then they shut it down again, like out of nowhere. And it is probably because sales weren't as great as they thought. But Lego has always been in denial about the theme failing because uh, somebody asked on Lego on Twitter once, like, hey, what happened to Bionicle? Like, did it get canceled because of poor sales? And their response twice was Bionicle was successful with variation across Marcus. And like, mm. <laughs> that's a very PR response about how it did. Um, so we kind of just make uh, make fun of it. Like, oh, sales were fine. Like, oh, why did they cancel it? Like, <laughs> that kind of thing. So after Bionicle ended, they did Star Wars action figures. Um, and those didn't do too great because uh, they kind of looked horrible. The uh, All the troopers and all the suited you know, action figures, those looked awesome. Like the stormtroopers and the dark troopers, you know, all of that. Those look great. The uh, human-like figures like Ray or um, some of the people from Rogue One, those uh, those didn't look too great. And so you, I had a friend, I have a friend who works at Target and he would like look at the action, the Lego action figures for Han Solo and Darth Maul from the Solo movie and they would just stay on the shelves permanently. <laughs> so... Um, I think buildable action figures from Lego aren't, uh, they haven't been in vogue for, for a while now. They're probably like, even after Bionicle came back the second time, just hasn't been a popular, popular thing. Kids don't want to buy, uh, action figures as much. They want to, they want to go back to the traditional, more Lego brick style of building for the most part. I, it's not entirely true, but it is for the most part, um, like their top selling themes, like only one of them tends to use like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's more non-standard pieces, like more tube stuff and like pin stuff and like um, complex stuff, you know, like building the car sets and that stuff. They use the uh, different pieces than the Lego bricks for the most part. So that's about the only thing that's left that's like not traditional Lego when it comes to being popular. And, and, and that's kind of one of my questions um... Uh, um, sorry, sorry for not knowing really anything about Bionicles, but, but how, do, um, how, how do Bionicles fit together? Um, they pretty much made their own uh, new pieces for Bionicle. Like they would come up with like new Lego pieces, basically, specifically for Bionicle that doesn't like, it can work with regular Lego bricks, but you have to have the right pieces to connect them. And they tend not to... Uh, some people can make them mesh really well when they make their own custom creations, but you tend to not see Lego bricks in Bionicle sets. Like they have their own kind of unique pieces. Uh, like, okay. so, um, so, so basically just the, those like um, crazy smart people that are like making like super stylistic stuff. Like um, those are the people that can merge Bionicles and Legos, um, but, but everyone else kind of doesn't. Yeah, exactly. They, it, it takes um, knowing certain techniques and how to connect stuff really well. Most people I know are cranky in the sense that they're like, oh, Bionicle's not real Lego kind of kind of thing where Bionicle fans will uh, defend that and like, no, Bionicle is part of Lego. But at the same time, I think there's oddly not that much crossover in terms of like Bionicle fans and Lego fans where... Uh, my friends and I had to kind of force ourselves to branch into actually liking the rest of Lego, but I know a lot of people in the Bionicle community who don't give, uh, they don't, they don't care for, uh, they don't care for actual Lego sets. They just care for Bionicle. So it's kind of weird. Like, I wouldn't say tribalism, but like people definitely like just one or the other. There's not as much overlap of like, Hey, I'm a Bionicle fan who actually does like these other like 10 Lego themes that happen to be out now so uh, and um so uh, like on um so so buying buying bionicles you have to buy them on like ebay right uh yeah at this point um usually i buy them when i go to the lego convention um the one that i go to in uh, virginia brick fair they tend to have a lot of people who bring their bionicle sets for sale there and they tend to be cheaper than ebay 
or something like that. So people usually go to eBay or Craigslist or they just get lucky going to the thrift store, that kind of thing. There is no like uniform uniform way to buy a uh, Bionicle at this point because it's been out for, yeah, it's been out of stock everywhere, you know, for who knows, who knows how long. So, um, so, so now are they, uh, like, like if, a, I, I don't know how much Bionicles cost, but if, but if a Bionicle set was $60 when it was, uh, like in 2010, um, how much, how much will it probably cost? Um, it, it, it really depends on the rarity of it. Cause there were some that were store exclusives. So uh -huh. if, if it was a common set, you'll probably be able to buy it for the same price it was back then. Maybe, a, maybe a little more, it just depends on who's selling it. Um, but if it was a store exclusive, those things can shoot up because they were just so rare where I saw someone complaining on Facebook, um, probably within the last night or so that, um, yeah, a set that was about 50, 60 bucks. I don't remember the exact price. People sell it for like 200 now. So yeah, it can, it can shoot up, but I would say for the most part now, nah, it's actually not, there was a point when it was expensive and I would say that was like right after Bionicle died. But at this point, you know, people still sell like 20 year old sets for almost as much as it was when it first came out. Huh, that's, um, that's, that's interesting. That's, um... yeah. That's uh, that's cool though for um, for you for you. So, uh, um, so, so are you still buying bionicles or um... uh, every every now and then? I would say I um, I buy regular Lego sets more often than buy I buy bionicle sets. Technically, bionicle is cheaper, but I don't like going to lengths to have to buy like used sets and stuff. I'll buy them if they're like easy to get a hold of, but if it comes to like having to pay for shipping and all that. I'd rather not. And are you um, are are you buying Lego sets just to kind of force yourself to branch out, or um, now do you like genuinely? No, genuinely I, I I think there are ones that look really cool. Um, I have them all over, but I have like a whole another desk of just Lego sets, like a specific theme that I'm a big fan of. It's called Hidden Side. Like I have this uh, box on hand already. It's like this this cool fire truck uh, that has a a mech on the back. Like you can detach the you can detach the mech separately from. Uh, oh, sorry, trying to get the glare out. You can detach the mech separately from the fire truck itself, but it's this uh, paranormal theme of like these teenagers using like their cell phones to blast ghosts, and they have like an app where you can blast the ghosts from the set yourself and all that stuff on there. So, um, I know one of the designers. One of the designers for that theme is my friend, and so yeah, I mean, I would say a fraction of why I buy them is because I know he worked on them and I want to show my support, but. I do legitimately think that there are Lego themes that have really cool uh, designs and aesthetics besides like just buying your standard like airplane or airport or police station set. I think there are cool Lego sets that aren't Bionicle uh, that are worth collecting. So, um, so, so with that said, um, you have a fire truck with a mech on the back and they're hunting ghosts? Yes. <laughs> I mean, not that specific one, but yes, it's the general idea of the that Lego theme. Uh, uh, okay, so 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 that Lego theme is they're hunting ghosts, and and, um, and then is uh, is this in like a alternate reality or like like in the future or? No, it's like in some fictionalized version of like Louisiana, because <laughs> oh. the the setting of the story is in like some swamp, so there's only like one place that that really fits in a. In America, that would be like Louisiana. So it's got like a southern southern theme to it. They have like a little web series, and uh, all the adults have a drawl. Oh, that's so. um, <laughs> that's awesome, and and especially especially because I'm a Swamp Thing uh, fan, then, <laughs> um, then I'll have to look that up. Yeah, it's um, pretty fun. Because you know that Swamp Thing comes from Louisiana, right? No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, um, actually, I, I um, Swamp Thing comes from a town called Homa, Louis, Homa Louisiana. Um, it's like a um, ninety minutes um, south southeast or south southwest of New Orleans. Okay. And um, and, and I went there. Um, I went there um, just because I like Swamp Thing, and I was expecting to see this like big bronze statue of Swamp Thing, and because <laughs> um, um, that's where he's from. And uh, but but. Um, they're, um, they're, find 
Uh, yeah, there was no, um, <laughs> and, and, uh, this was, uh, this was like nine months after the storm. So, so like half of the, um, half of everything was boarded up, um, including the, um, including the comic book store. Like, like there was no, no longer a comic book store in Homa. So like, so th um, the one guy that I thought might, um, might know, um, Swamp Thing, um, didn't. And then like, <laughs> like everyone I talked to, I'm like, Hey, um, do you know Swamp Thing? Or, or, or um, uh, um, have you heard of Swamp Thing? And uh, like nobody in Homa had heard of it. <laughs> and, and, and it's a, um, it's a super small town. It's like, um, it, it's like twice as big as my hometown of New Plymouth, Idaho. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but, uh, but, but like it, it, if somebody had written like 300 comic books about um, New Plymouth, Idaho, then I'm pretty sure all the people in New Plymouth would have not yeah. Um, heard about it so 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 anyway it was just um yeah i i don't know why nobody in um homa has heard of swamp thing yeah that'd be strange i think i would but, but um but yeah so 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 swamp things are really cool because the um and have you ever been to louisiana no i haven't so so swamp thing has like really really cool art of of like 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 swamp thing wandering around the swamps and like um, like like just all the all the stuff growing in the swamps and and when I went there I was like oh my gosh this is like exactly like the comic book um, <laughs> it was just it it, it 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 was just really really surreal because like usually comic books aren't like real life at all and I was seeing this like just really really cool thing that I I'd only seen in comic books but never actually in real life. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, 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 what's your next Lego set that you want to buy? Um, probably either something from that theme that I just mentioned, Hidden Side, or um, another one called Monkey Kid, which is uh, based off of China's Journey to the West. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, it's an adaptation of that. Um, they, they kind of like fast forward the story to a sort of present day. They have the same like characters from that legend. Um, and now they're in like a present day setting and like a kid that takes over as the Monkey King's successor. So that, that theme is really cool. It, it only gets sold at the Lego stores in America be and not like other um, retail places because it's more of like a not China exclusive, but they are definitely trying to sell this theme to the Chinese public more so than uh, people in America. Mm -hmm. So it has limited availability in America. And I do want to get more of that. It's just more expensive than I'd like uh, compared to some of the other sets that I buy. So I do want more, just need more money, basically. Cool. And um, I'm going back to your friend that's the designer on the um on the ghost um on the swamp ghosts um, um how um how does how, how did your friend get a job as a designer uh, so um, he can you can you like mail lego your designs and say hey well here's here's something really cool i made it my made out of well LEGO. i mean I, i'm sure that he needed a portfolio but he studied industrial design in a university and then he applied for an internship at Lego and he managed to get that. And then they hired him on like, I think a year later or something like that as after he finished up his schooling. So I think he probably did have a portfolio and he definitely was designing like custom creations up until that point. Um, so I don't know, the, I don't remember the full story. He has told me once or twice how that went down and I have been curious about it, but I wouldn't be able to like tell you we could, uh, the whole thing because it's been it's been a while since I last asked about it. Uh, yeah, um, I think um, I think that's really really cool and and like it seems like all the Lego designers are just really really good. Yeah, um, I think it's been a lot more creative than it has been like even ten plus years ago. I think they're more willing to work with smaller pieces or just like a nice variation of pieces and like throwing in random stuff that has that was used before like they they're really good at designing sets now with like a lot more shape and form than they they used to and i think that's really cool 
Yeah, yeah, um, and especially when I was a kid, because um, it was just a bunch of square. Um, yeah, blocks. exactly. The, there was a lot more of a blocky look to you know sets from the 70s and the 80s and the 90s like uh very rectangular uh like and i think now they're doing they're, they've gotten a lot better at making a lot of the sets look smooth and round and you know i think there's just really cool like uh, form to how they look now compared to even when i was a kid so i think they've come a long way cool and and what's um what's the biggest lego set that you have put together um well i've helped put together bigger than what i own so i helped put together a lego voltron set which technically speaking compared to the size of some other ones that exist isn't that big but it is a almost 200 dollar set um, uh -huh. which, which takes a lot of steps and a lot more patience than i would have to build um just because there are a lot of bags to it and that would probably take more than one day for me to build uh, if it was by myself. But we had like a t we had a team build of like four of us putting together the set, so that was cool. I put I helped put it together with my friend because he was the one that helped design it. So that was oh. an, that was an awesome experience. That's um, that's really cool. So so did they did they manufacture it the same way that he designed it, or or, or the whole? Um, the whole build was he complaining like oh well this this piece should have been been here this... um, no i don't think they reworked it a ton from his final version but he didn't originally come up with the uh, design lego has a site where you can basically petition hey make this theme if you have enough supporters like make this set and so the voltron one on this site got ten thousand supporters and they said okay well we don't actually want to make it and then he was like no please i know i can i can like read i can i can make this work so he took what the guy made on that site and he like reworked it in a way that would fit um lego standards a lot better and it, it is there's a pretty significant difference between the two versions but i'm glad that he was able to make that idea actually turn into a set so um i think it, it wasn't just him so like i mean there's a whole creative team behind getting the set released but he definitely played a big factor in uh Lego actually honoring their promise of saying they're going to make the make the set because it got enough supporters. Huh, that's um, that's really really cool. So uh, so 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 you probably um, you probably don't know this the answer to this since you're not a designer, but um, but <laughs> but I'm, I'm guessing that like certain pieces are more expensive than other pieces, and yeah. so um, <laughs> and so I'm wondering um, I'm wondering if like. He, if he made the design and then somebody is like, uh, well, you, uh, you can only use like, uh, like most of your pieces are premium pieces. So you need to totally re rework this so that it only has the cheap pieces. Um, um, I, I think there is that kind of like budget slash economy to designing sets that comes in to it, but they usually know what price point they're building the sets to. Uh, okay. So they usually get the budget beforehand before they start like putting it together, but it definitely gets factored in like the final cost of what it will actually be. Yeah, uh, that uh, that, uh, that makes sense because they're like Legos are pretty expensive, but they're um, but they're they're like really really good value. Mm -hmm. I agree. Wish I had more money to buy like bigger sets, but I'm I'm kind of okay with like the price points that I buy them at. <laughs> Oh, um, what what do you think of Netbricks, and and is that still a, is that still around? Um, uh, I have no idea. Have you ever heard of Netbricks? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, it's a, it, it's like Netflix, but um, with oh Lego. right, yeah, no, no, I remember you told you told me back when I was living in Thailand about that. That's right, you're you're like renting the renting the sets. You got to build them, and then you like put it sent it back to them or. Yeah, yeah, and and I was sure their um, I was sure their business model would like capsize. Um, I think it's still around. Actually, I looked it up that one time uh, last year, or whatever it was, and I think it's still around. Um, yeah, uh, that uh, that can get expensive too, too though, because like, <laughs> um, like you uh, you buy like a certain number of credits, and then if you want a, like a two hundred dollar set, then um, if you want a two hundred dollars set, then you have to like pay like extra for um, for that because um, 
because you get like um, different subscription levels, like like seventy dollars worth of sets or one hundred and twenty dollars worth of sets or or something mm -hmm. for, um, for for like for like twenty or thirty bucks a month or something like that. So so if you're not um, if if you're like me and don't want to like actually keep the Legos afterwards, it's a pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have a different uh, deferring f philosophies on that because I like I like owning them. I do think it's cool because the building experience is definitely like the main part of it for me. Like I, I do enjoy the build um, and I just usually just goes on my shelf afterwards and I don't grab it again after that. But at the same time, I do like keeping it. <laughs> so while while the building experience is important to me i do like owning it permanently rather than having to take it apart and send it back to them so probably not the service for me unfortunately uh, yeah so um so so, so back to uh, back to ttv you said that um you said that you uh, you guys all started with um being hardcore bionicles fans and um, w w when you started, there were only like four or five of you, right? Um, and and it, and now um, now now there's like twelve or thirteen people. We, right? We've had we've had periods of starting small and then ballooning and then kicking out a bunch of people and then like going back. I would say there's a core five of us that have stuck together oh, since 2010, since we were like teenagers, and we've gone with like adding a big list of people and losing a big list of people since then uh we do have a lot of people but like i said with people wanting to grow up and move on and stuff like there aren't as many people that are active or around uh i would say it's probably less than five people who are actively like making stuff besides showing up to a podcast at the moment uh okay and then so, uh, and then how many how many podcasters do you have um, that depends. Sometimes it can be four, sometimes it could be seven. It just depends on who wants to show up. So uh -huh. when, when we have that list of like 13 people or technically more now, that's like the potential amount of people we could have. But, you know, since people aren't around or don't feel like talking about it or aren't, you know, um, aren't informed enough on the subject that we're going to be talking about, yeah, it ends up being smaller, smaller than that. Uh, okay, so um, so so of those um, of those people are are everyone um, are everyone like you that like they started out hardcore Bionicles fans and now they're um, now they also like Legos or or are um, are there a couple that are like oh yeah I'll, I'll never like Legos? Um, no, I would say a lot of us moved on. Um, I mean, Bionicle will still always be number one to us easily, but. I think a lot of us have been willing to branch out to a certain degree and buy buy actual Lego sets. Cool. Um, so, um, so, so one of the things I wanted to talk about was you and um, you and Thailand. Um, so, so um, wh well, when I. Um, one of the uh, one of the things that happens to me is like it, it, it's a little bit hard like going back to the um, going back to the U.S. because I like I've lived in Thailand for quite a while, so mm -hmm. uh, so so like one of the um, um, one of the things like I thought I, I thought driving would be hard for me, um, but it um, but it's not. But like walking uh, walking around because since Thailand drives on the other side then mm -hmm. then like you have to like check over like oh, over the opposite shoulder when you're a pedestrian so so walking around i just felt like totally out of place um, but but i never drive in thailand so like <laughs> um, like that's not uh, like driving is not like in my head but like walking around like like when i came back to the us i was like oh this is um this is just weird i i felt weird for like a, a few days um, I don't know if you've been. I, I don't know if you lived in Thailand for long enough to like experience anything like that. Or um... no, I could definitely. It's definitely. A sh it's a mild shock, I would say, um, between the two of them. I think I've traveled back and forth between them enough where like I can come back. Like, yeah, I'm home again, or whatever. So, like, I went back to Thailand 
I took a summer trip in 2018 before I moved for Unicity and I hadn't been back in probably four years or so. Um, but I came back and like, okay, Bangkok's a little different, but this doesn't feel weird to be back. Like it feels like I'm home. And then I, when I come back to the U S it is a little weird. Like after the internship, I, I came back and I was in San Francisco for a few days. I was like, Oh my goodness, I don't have to speak in Thai to the cashier. Like they understand <laughs> English. So, I mean, that was kind of strange. Um, but you know, after a little bit, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm back in like familiar territory. This doesn't, it's not actually that strange. You know, I'm, I get, I get pretty used to it quickly between jumping between countries because I've done it quite a few times now. Yeah. And, and, and the thing that, uh, the thing that happens to me is because, um, like lots and lots of Thai people want to practice English with me. And so I, uh, when I'm, when I'm speaking to <laughs> Thai people, I, I try to speak really slowly so that, so, so that they can understand everything and so that they feel like, hey, well, I just talked to the foreigner. Um, he understood he understood me and I understood him. Um, so so for for that to for that to be like a, a successful exchange, I have to talk really slowly. So and like my normal speech is pretty fast. So one of the things that happens when I go back to the US is I um, just like talk like way, 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 way too fast. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm home. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't, I have as, that much of an issue with communication other than like, Oh yeah, I don't need to speak Thai. Everyone's speaking English around me. That's a, that's like the main difference is probably just hear what language I'm hearing around me. Uh, yeah. And, and then, um, the other thing, like, I think I'm, I, I think I'm past this now. Um, but but like Thai people just don't understand sarcasm at all, <laughs> um, um, and and like my uh, my humor used to be like really really sarcastic, and and I'd always like to like make jokes to like make make people laugh, but um, but in Thailand then uh, people would always say why are you like uh, sometimes they would say it, but but most of the time it was like their facial expression of like Joseph why are you saying weird mean stuff, and <laughs> and. <it> was, <laughs> I was like, um, I'm, I'm trying to be funny. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just. <laughs> oh my gosh. This one. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so, so, the, so the first couple of times that where, where I spent some time in Thailand and then came back to the U S um, like I had all this like built up sarcasm and <laughs> just like unleashed it on the first, like on my first, like two or three friends. And, <laughs> and they're like, Whoa, Whoa, calm down, Joseph, calm down. And it, um, and then I realized, oh um, yeah, I, I'm going just like way way overboard. But um, but but I think I've kind of like re um, like redone my humor or whatever, um, or just just I'm 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 much much less um, sarcastic now than I uh, than I was like five years ago when I moved here. That's funny. Um, so um, so. Um, what's, what's the, uh, what's the food in Thailand that you miss the most? Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's the Thai food that I miss per se, because I mean, I'm staying with my family again and my mom makes Thai food as it is. So there isn't much to miss out that's unique to Thailand specifically, but I miss the random restaurants that I would used to go to because it's not exactly the same over here. Like, I really like that uh, Roman pizza place that's under the Asok station that I used to go to all the time. Uh, there's like a, the Indian place I mentioned to you that's in the M Quartier um, food court. That was also really nice. And it's a lot more expensive in America to buy Indian food. And then there's also the Lebanese restaurant that I used to go to a bunch. Like it's like those three places were like some of my favorite places to get food from. And it is kind of sad that now I have to kind of settle for fast food or pay a premium to go to the same place, basically. Yeah, yeah, and and especially in um, like like Utah, Utah is really great for sandwich shops and um, like like one or two other like <laughs> kind of niche things, but um, but but like um, and 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 they're. There are a couple of good Indian restaurants, but um, but 
like every meal there is like 20 bucks uh exactly exactly um so and and um thailand doesn't have any like cheap indian food what well, well there's like one um uh, one place that had a had a buffet for um 199 baht <laughs> um that um that um that i saw which uh, which is a great deal for india yeah food. that's not bad um, it's not bad but um but most of the uh, most of the indian food isn't as like uh, um cuz i've been to indian indian food in india is really really cheap but mm -hmm. like it's really good and really cheap <laughs> um but like outside of india then um then then i'm not sure why it's like so much more um, yeah um but um but yeah that um that's uh, that's one of the nice things about thailand is there's lots of indian restaurants that um um, co um compared to utah county that has um one one indian restaurant two indian restaurants yeah there's like two in provo i think a lot of thai restaurants but i don't need those <laughs> so so have um what, uh, what's your what's your favorite thai restaurant in utah county or ha have you been to one um, I mean, I have been to some just because my mom would want to go as a family, but I don't like deeply remember, uh, those experiences. I think I ordered like just not steak, but like some sort of meat dish, um, mm -hmm. while I was there. So it's not like anything too Thai. Totally not Thai food, but my current obsession right now is this cheesesteak restaurant that opened up like two minutes away from my house. And I do like Philly cheesesteaks quite a bit. So I've been going like very often. It's great. Oh, that's, um, that's, that's awesome. Um, so, so, so what's the, what's the cheesesteak restaurant called? Uh, Steak Express. They have okay. more than, they have more than cheesesteaks, but like, I don't really go to order not cheesesteaks from a place that has cheesesteaks. <laughs> so, so there's the, there's this really cool restaurant by my, um, speaking of, che speaking of cheesesteaks, there, uh, there's this really, um, cool restaurant by my house. Um, the guy is from Holland and, um, and he's, um, he's been in the restaurant business his whole life. And, and I think this, um, this is his like third restaurant that he's like started from scratch. Okay. Um, so, so, so he has like 20 things on the menu and um and like like everything is just everything is just like absolutely delicious um it, um a, actually i ate there today and um had his lasagna and caesar salad um mm -hmm. so um so so just 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 everything is awesome um but but i don't think he's ever been to the u.s um and uh, and and so his his cheesesteak his cheesesteaks are he takes steak like 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 real high quality steak, um, um, grills it, um, chops it up, and then puts it on a sandwich with cheese. Um, and so and so so I was eating his cheesesteak sandwich and I was like, okay, um, this guy um, uh, this uh, uh, this guy has been reading advertisements about cheesesteaks. Um, he hasn't like actually like like he's, <laughs> he's been reading advertisements like oh real steak it's delicious it's um because uh, like all the cheese all the cheesesteaks that I've had are like they don't try and make the steak and cheesesteak um, taste like like actual steak right but um, but um, but this guy like 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 the um, the, um, the slices are just like really really thick and. But and it's really really good, but it's not like actual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a bit different because they <laughs> tend to be very uh very small and thin pieces of meat like <laughs> clumped up together. So that's funny. That's funny. Um, yeah, I don't know why. It's just like I probably like it more than I should, and I, maybe one day I should actually go to Philly to try them out. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I've been enjoying this place. It's not like top notch i wouldn't say they're the best cheesesteaks in the world but they're offering something unique that isn't super close to me and it's better than uh probably better than the fast food around here it's a nice change up from the regular fast food chains so so what makes uh what, what makes these cheesesteaks 
Um, so good. Uh, mostly just because they're cheat steaks, but uh, the, <laughs> they could use some improvement on the buns, but I do think they're um, the specific order that I get, which is like the, the meat with using like cream cheese and some of the other stuff, the way that it's mixed together it turns out really well. Um, the taste of it is really good. So the actual like product inside, you know, between the buns is actually really good. And I think that's what's been selling it for me. But they also, they do combos and they have actually really good seasoning on their fries. So that's been a, always been a plus as well, like to, to get some really nicely seasoned fries on top of that. Oh, that's cool. There's, there's nothing better than like really, really good fries. Yeah, it's been, it's been very enjoyable. I like getting food from there. So, um, so since you've been, uh, since you've been back has, um, and, um, since you've been back, have you spoken very much Thai or, or like, like, are you ever in a situation where like someone's speaking Thai and you're like, oh, Hey, I know, I know that language. No, not really. No. <laughs> um, don't I don't I've never really spoken it with my mom I think maybe a couple weeks ago my sister was saying that I don't really know how to speak Thai or something like that because I she never hears me speak Thai so then I talked to my mom I said a, a sentence in Thai where it's like oh you know she really she, she wants to hear us speak in Thai and she's like I understood what you said but that was a very weird accent <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, actually, I um, one of the uh, I, um, I remember when uh, when oh um, no, no sorry I'm 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 confusing you and Thomas um, <laughs> you uh, and you never met Thomas right I don't think so okay yeah so um so so he's in um he's in england now he um he he lived in thailand for a while but his um his dad um his dad's from his dad's from england and his mom's from thailand so he's, okay but um uh, but anyway since it's um since it's a story about thomas then i um <laughs> that, uh, then i won't tell you um <laughs> um so So, um, so, so you finally, you finally talked to your mom in Thai, like, like a month ago? No, that Is wasn't it? the first time ever. I, I have like asked her questions or like said stuff while I've been like, I usually have to do errands with her. So when I'm driving, sometimes I've like mentioned it, but I don't, I don't have conversations with her in Thai. Yeah. And, and, um, so, so the Thai, uh, the Thai language is interesting, especially like, um, especially learning it, um, because, um, so, so one of my, uh, one of my upcoming videos that I want to make is why learning Thai or uh, why, why it's impossible to learn Thai. <laughs> and, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the language, like, um, like, like language, uh, language wise, it's a pretty easy way, or it's a, it, it's a relatively easy language, but, um, but, but just there's, there's a lot of dynamics and factors that, um, that, um, that make Thai kind of, um, really, really hard to learn. So, mm -hmm. so, so I, 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 I've kind of moved on and, um, I used to, um, back, back when you were in Thailand, I was very optimistic, like trying to learn Thai. And and then I realized, oh well, it, it's it, it's going to be a lot more fun if I just take a if I just take a break, and become like mad and bitter and and uh, list out uh, like start thinking about why Thai is so hard to learn, instead of um, it, instead of what I was doing, which is like um, like like good motivation for me to keep um, learning and studying Thai. Mm -hmm. So and so so anyway, I'll I'll. I'll I'll get out of my phase for a while, but I, I was never like, um, I, I was never actually in that phase. And, and it's just, <laughs> it sounds really interesting because like a lot of foreigners um, have lived in Thailand for like 10 years and can't really speak more than like two or three words in, in, in Thai and their accent's just really, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. so, um, so so I don't know, um, I don't know if there are other um, places in the world where 
a foreigner can live and like interact with people and like just not speak any um, any of the language at all. And yeah, that that always impressed me because I mean when I first lived in Thailand, I didn't live in Bangkok and pretty much had to fend for yourself and English didn't go doesn't go very far depending on where you live in Thailand. But then I was shocked when I first went to really went to Bangkok and it was like, oh my gosh, there's an English bookstore. They have all this stuff here. That's cool. <laughs> but then over time, I, you know, coming back to Bangkok is like, wow, this is a really easy place to live where you don't need to know Thai. I mean, I still use Thai because I want to be convenient to the people that I'm talking to, but it's shocking, like watching other people I know, um, how they get by without knowing like nothing of the language. Yeah, and um, oh, um, so 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 I think we're uh, I think we're about out of time. But but my uh, my my final question for you is um, what's what's the thing you miss the most about um, Thailand? And and I want to preface that with um, like um, like like graphic novels are very hard to find. There, uh, um, um, <laughs> uh, the, um, the the bookstore Kino. How do you say that? Kino Ku. Kino Kunia. Yeah, um, um, Kino Kunia has three branches, and one of um, one of them has a bunch of graphic novels. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but like the last time I uh, the last time I went to the U.S., I brought back like half a suitcase of graphic novels, um, just because. <laughs> uh, like, like they've got Th one. Those are the ones that you wanted, and they're yeah, yeah. significantly cheaper. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, and that's um, that's my point. So, so gra uh, graphic novels are much much cheaper. Um, and and more available in in um, in in the U.S. and and then like electronics um, like like one of the things that's kind of frustrating living in Thailand is um, buying um, buying an electronic that I think will work and then it just turns out to be garbage. Uh, but 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 anyway, um, um, that's um, that, um, that's not my that's not my question. My question is like even though even though you probably don't miss stuff like that. Um, what's, uh, what's the thing that, um, uh, you miss the most about Thailand? Uh, accessibility. I would say transportation while traffic itself is miserable. I missed how easy it was to just like hop on the train and go across all the way across town or how easy it is to like fare, like catch a taxi and go to a certain place or, you know, call one up on the app. Uh, it's really, really cheap compared to transportation in America. Like, it, orders of magnitude cheaper in Thailand to get around uh, than it is in America. And I would say that's probably like the biggest thing. I know like it wouldn't be that bad going to like a, a big city even like the metro there, like the trains there are, it would be easier to get across those like to cross like LA or DC or whatever, but they're still significantly more expensive compared to taking like the BTS and the MRT and all that, um, having taken both those trains in like LA and DC, it's it's still still so much cheaper in Thailand to get where you want to go. Oh yeah, I um, and easy when, yeah. Uh, when I went to when I went to San Francisco, um, and um, it, 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 um, it was just kind of a shock because I because I took a I took the bus and the bus was like three dollars and fifty cents. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, for three dollars and fifty cents in Thailand, <laughs> um, I could go from like one side of Bangkok to the other side of Bangkok. Yeah, and exactly. I, um, but um, and 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 then the buses are nine baht in mm -hmm. uh, in Thailand, which is um, what's what, what's nine baht like thir thirty cents. So um, so 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 the buses in San Francisco are literally like. 10 times more than the buses in um, Thailand. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's um, that. Uh, that's something that I love. That I love too is that and, and taxis are everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Like like you just have to like, like pretty much every street in Bangkok, uh, you just have to wait <laughs> for like three minutes and the taxi will drive by. Yeah, it's great. If there's a if there's a street in Thailand, there's a car there passing through. <laughs> Cool. So, uh, so any um, any final comments or anything you want to say that we didn't talk about? Uh, no, I think I think we've all we've covered it.
covered at all. Maybe not meant. Maybe we haven't mentioned that this was sponsored by AirMap. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, yeah, um, but uh, that's a. Uh, uh, but 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 I forgot the um, I forgot the tagline. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, um, sponsored by AirMap. <laughs> Uh, something about um, rising uh, rising drone technology for something or something. So anyway, um, thanks um, thanks uh, thanks very much, Justin, and talk to you soon. Thank you.